Today on Grantham, is it possible to suppress the fish? Is this brake licking? Sorry. Today on Grantham, is it possible to suppress the 50 cal? Yes. This is a good question because the 50 cal is a 600 to almost 800 grain slug traveling at around 3,000 feet per second. That's a lot of energy. Micah, is it possible to suppress that? Highly improbable. Improbable. But not, impossible. not impossible. Today on Grantham, we're going to figure it out. The 50 cal is one of the internet's favorite rounds. It is legendary. And right here, we have a Barrett M107, which is the military's 50 caliber antimaterial rifle of choice. And we will be seeing the options, if it can be suppressed, and how it all works. Today on Grantham, suppressing a 50 cal. But before we get into it, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. The biggest sponsor of the channel is the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. You can work on cool weapons, learn cool skills, go and check them out. A big to them. We of course cannot forget primary arms. Micah? Yeah, primary arms for the sickest optics uh, that have been around since the ancient Egypt times. Not quite, but close. We'll, we'll take it. Primary Arms, a big thank you to them. We can't, of course, forget Savior Bags. They're looking to make a bag, I guess, your personality. That's something that you can do. That's like a thing nowadays. And then, of course, we can't forget today's ammo sponsor, America's Ammunition Company, AAC. A big thank you to them, made in the US, and uh, a good price. So, can, uh, pretty awesome. Without further ado, Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, my often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, John Moses Browning, the ghost of him. He will haunt your dreams, by the way. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. So right here, we have the Barrett M107. If you're not familiar with the Barrett M107, it is a semi-automatic, magazine-fed, 50 caliber anti-material rifle. We're not gonna say sniper rifle because uh, it might be a, uh, just a tad bit misleading. Got him. Got him. We have to give a big shout out to do two different companies for bringing these awesome things out. We have Hurricane Butterfly for bringing out the Barrett examples, and we have CGS Suppressors for bringing out uh, their uh, example as well. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we are lifted on the wings of angels. No. If you come over to the muzzle device right here, you can see that the 50 cal is very interesting. There's a lot of energy coming out of this bad boy right here. And the 50 is really cool because it can carry a bunch of different ammunition in terms of the payloads that it can deliver. Anything from armor piercing to incendiary explosive. Um, the 50 cal is a very versatile round. But there's a lot of energy there and we have to bleed that energy off. So we have this huge muzzle brake right on the end of our rifle to ensure that we try to keep the 50 cal as non-spicy as possible. What kind of energy is it? Like good energy, bad? Do you think it's a cancer? Or no, like a, I would say like um, like the power of a thousand suns, like oh, good. so that would make it a... Uh, skin cancer. Yeah. So right here we have the Barrett suppressor. The problem with mounting a suppressor to a 50 cal is that you're containing a lot of energy. That energy is going to equal recoil back in your shoulder. So if you look at the Barrett suppressor right here, we can see that it does have a muzzle brake at the end. So a suppressor is somewhat for sound, but also mostly for signature reduction in terms of the amount of smoke put out, the amount of flash put out. So there is an option with the Barrett where you can remove the end cap and have a uh, cap that's not going to put out as much flash. But this is how the Barrett suppressor typically comes. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start off using Barrett's model. We're gonna fire it unsuppressed and then we're gonna fire it suppressed. And then we'll show you some of the advancements and technology that have been made and do a little bit of uh, science. So as a little treat, we're gonna fire some 50 cal unsuppressed. Uh, Micah is to the side of the muzzle. Micah, I can't wait to hear how that how that does. I'm not you. excited. I'm not excited either. So, <clears throat> let's check it out. Right. Going hot. Cool. So we have fired the 50. Um, as you can tell, there is a little bit of. Um, sound that is associated with the 50 cal. Did that push yeah, that up? Yeah, my mat is now folded over everywhere. A big thank you to Everly Sock for these mats. Uh, okay, so we've done that. What we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna clear the weapon out 
we're gonna go ahead and mount up the suppressor and we're gonna see how that changes things. I will, I do wanna say, the uh, the recoil on the Barrett Light 50 is extremely pleasant. It's a very pleasant weapon to fire and you really have to give it to Barrett for that. They really did do a good job on that. We now have the Pringles can attached to the Barrett. We're gonna go ahead and fire a few shots off of the suppressor and we're gonna see what the difference in sound is. You ready? Yep, send it. Going hot. That is extremely pleasant. Huh. Look at my mat. My mat's just oh. fine. So if the last one was, uh, you know, the German mistress, uh, this one is like the kind caress of a cat purring in your lap. Let's hear it from over here. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, send her. Yo, we're not even we're not even peeking on the mic. And to be clear, we are shooting uh, full power 50. Like this isn't a subsonic round or anything like that. And that was extremely pleasant to the ear. The recoil is definitely more stout. Now we fired the Barrett version. Let's go ahead and let's see what the insane gentlemen over at CGS have figured out. You know what? I'm gonna shoot with EarPro on because I have enough hearing damage as it is from the military. And uh, but. Are you gonna raw dog it? Absolutely. God. Okay. We're gonna try it out. I'm, I'm skeptical. Mike, are you skeptical? Uh, he said I don't need ear pro, but I'm, I'm skeptical, so I have ear pro. Maybe I'll listen to it and then I'll take it off. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So good. We're going hot. Yep. Oh my God. Wait. Whoa. 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 Okay, I'm taking my ear pro off. That was so quiet. Don't. <sighs> All right. I want to hear this. Dang it! That, is so that quiet. was bonkers. So we will say, uh, on those first two rounds, obviously you guys saw it, it wasn't cycling that ammo. So we're gonna try it on this ammo as well. Uh, we'll also use that ammo on the uh, Barrett, just as a fair test. We'll see if this cycles it. <laughs> You don't right. think the Doyle story is worth that? All right, tell him the Doyle story. There's a guy in my uh, career field, his name is Doyle, and uh, he used to always talk about whether it's guns or trucks. He'd be like, talk about oil, you know. I know why it's not working, it's no oil. But he couldn't say oil, so he'd say oil, because he's like from Arkansas. But he also couldn't pronounce his own name, because his name is Doyle, so he'd be like, Doyle, talk, Doyle, talk about the oil. <laughs> <laughs> you pretty confident, Micah? I'm very confident, and I'm pretty close now, too. Alright, here we go. Is it light It's pretty freaking quiet, dude. It's quiet. That's ridiculous. Dang. Okay, I wanna pop my ears. Come try yeah. this. Hi guys. Sheesh! I think I got no oil in it. Whoops. Oh, he right. broke my oh, dang, that was the last my one. God. This is why you don't let the cameraman shoot guns, dude. Well, <sighs> oh Jesus, okay. That is so quiet. I don't have ears, my ears are not ringing and it's not uncomfortable either. What? <sighs> dude. So it wasn't a dull problem, it, it was a bag problem. Yeah, so we, we should point that out. So it wasn't a problem with the uh, CGS suppressor or the M107. It was a magazine problem. Every time, man, every time. All right, so the blast off of the 50 is a little bit crazy. If you've been in the military, if you've seen it, those muscle brakes are huge. You saw it earlier. We have a target right here. Uh, you know, with the brake, it's just, Micah, it's... Crazy, yeah, right there. All right, he's fine, he's fine. Going hot. Oh! 
I mean, it moved, but it was pleasant. Oh. You know, just minor burn marks. That's gotta be hot coming out of there. Next up is the uh, CGS suppressor, obviously with uh, no muzzle cap or brake on it. It's probably gonna be way more pleasant. And also uh, we have given the M107 from CGS uh, some cleaning. Yeah, nothing. The recoil on these, when you go to a straight suppressor, you just got all that gas kicking back. So Michael had this little compilation video between those two when we we're just laying down there shooting. You can see the Barrett way less recoil and it gets progressively worse as we trap more of that gas. So all this, this thing is super duper quiet. That's a technical term and kills all that flash. You're going to get significantly more recoil. Is it that bad? Not really, um, but it's something to consider if, uh, I don't know, maybe you didn't drink a lot of milk, uh, you drink more soy or I mean, something I like that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test the sound difference between the uh, normal Barrett with just the muzzle brake and the CGS suppressor uh, and see how that sounds at different distances. So right now we're at 200. We're gonna see how loud they are. We're gonna be putting the camera up facing towards them and then uh, we'll be moving out to 500 and then 1,000 to uh, see how that sounds. So we'll go ahead and we'll start. We'll face the camera towards so you guys can see the shooters. And uh, we're off access of them uh, a solid amount, so we are safe. That's an FYI. For oh my lord. <laughs> I would have no idea what I was being shot at with that. All right, the audience gets to experience this, not us. Good luck. Cool, so we are now at a thousand. Um, we're not gonna be here. And uh, you guys are gonna get to hear what it sounds like to get shot at by uh, 50, both suppressed and unsuppressed. Uh, interesting, especially at that CGS suppressor. So we've learned a lot today. Uh, the Barrett 50 can certainly be suppressed. The 50 can be suppressed. There's always gonna be a little tit for tat though. Obviously as we added increasingly quiet suppressors, we got increasingly more recoil. That being said, it was extremely pleasant to shoot a 50 with the suppressor on. Micah agreed. Like It blew my mind. I couldn't believe, I can't believe how quiet the CGS can is. Even in the last five years, you've seen a lot of uh, good leaps uh, made in battle technology. So it's cool to see these uh, at work, especially on a large weapon like the 50 and downrange, it was pretty cool as well. So to talk a little bit about this, we do have our very own friend from CGS right here. So you were just saying that because CGS group is in the room. <laughs> okay. We have a room. We have a room together. You just want to build down right next to me. Um, just talk, naturally, just talk a little bit about the design, like the battle tech and all that kind of stuff. Real plain, real simple, man. Um, anything that you say that's stupid will cut out and everything. So just talk and we'll, we'll cut it. Together. Or I'm going to keep it in. Yeah, everything or we keep I it say. in. <laughs> all right, tell me when you're ready. Good to go. Hey, thank you for coming on the channel, man. Can you tell me a little bit about the tech um, that you have on the CGS suppressor? I've used um, other CGS Did you want to ask, int introduce? <sighs> You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm a little excited. I love CGS suppressors, man. I've used them on a lot of guns. They Thank are you. they are incredible. It's incredible tech. Can you talk a little bit to it? I can. So I can't take credit for any of it. Of this course. Is Josh Parker. Yeah. He designs all of it. And if you're familiar with our stuff, the easiest way to explain this, it's an overgrown Hyperion. Uh, we took the Hyperion, which is extremely effective on 30 caliber, scaled mm -hmm. it up with a 50 cal appropriate bore and decided to make it to see what it would do on a 50. Can, can you tell us about with the Hyperion? How does the baffle tech differ from your traditional baffle, uh, baffle tech? We call it varying core diameter. So there's a little bit of that going on. Usually what's different about it compared to that suppressor is traditionally you'll see kind of an angular uh, geometry that runs pretty much from one end of the suppressor to the other. Josh took that for the first stage of this but in the second stage, he changed the geometry to more of a radius because in our experience, the slower moving, lower pressure gas in that area of the can will respond better to that geometry. So instead of just repeating from one end of, of the can to the other, we're addressing the gas here differently than we are here 
the other thing that makes it unique, my monkey brain is entirely too small to understand precisely what is being said right now the other thing that makes it unique is there is an annular space that you can't see so if you can imagine the baffles in this suppressor are actually not touching the outside it's they're inside here and there's a gap and in this particular suppressor the gap is about a quarter of an inch so gas immediately leaving the muzzle of the firearm is diverted outside the baffle stack interesting into this volume of space that exists at 14 inches long and about a quarter of an inch all the way around and what that does is, is allow us to kind of put that portion of the muzzle blast on pause yeah until the bore pressure on the inside drops then that can be reintroduced and if you're watching a high-speed video of this thing you're going to see two very distinct releases almost like you would with an m1 abrams main gun. <laughs> I'm not mature enough to be running a YouTube channel. I guess the question is, do you need a 50 caliber suppressor? And to that I say, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's fucking cool. Yeah. It's really fucking cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's Bill of Rights guy. So, you know, get yourself a 50 cal suppressor. In any case, the point is, as cool as these suppressors are, if you don't have training with these, it's not going to matter. So get out there, get training. There are tons of great places to get training from when it comes to uh, this long range stuff. Go and check them out. Uh, you know, right off the top, I'm thinking of Fred from County Cube Tackle, Tactical and Mike, uh, those are good guys. Get out there, get that training, actually pull triggers. Get out there, touch grass, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you guys and uh, we've got nothing else for you guys. Final thing for you guys. If you're looking for sick gear and sick chest rigs, what can we not forget, Micah? Onward, research.com. The coolest chest rigs that are made by us. Go and check them out. Also, cool uh, hats. Make them your personality. Sick hats. Sick hats. They're a vibe, as the kids would say. I keep wearing them, and now I have a second kid on the way. Yeah, well, people people put the hats on, and they say, sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> Go and check out the Patreon, too, guys. We have great content coming, a lot of lives coming up. So. Go check them out. Thank you so much for joining us. We have way more cool content coming. And uh, as always, stay tuned.